Howitchen, uh, or sorry, Comox, seventh place. All the way here. Excellent. That is, uh, that is going to be our through line. So yeah. we're coming back to that multiple times over the course of this. Welcome to Starlight Stadium in Langford, BC. My name is Rotero and glad to have you with us for the Sir John Jackson Cup Final. It's gonna be a good one. You have Vic West FC on your broadcast right in the green and white kit going for their second consecutive title, their 24th Sir John Jackson Cup. And on their left, in the red and black kit, Comox Valley United, who are on the cup run to remember. They finished seventh in the league campaign and our one win away from host, hoisting silverware. Alongside me in the booth today, the one, the only, you love him, you hate him, we hope you love him, Mr. Vince Greco. Vince, how you doing today? Thanks, Arturo, I love the, uh, the love-hate. <laughs> I think I covered my bases either way. Yeah. But Comox, as we see here on the screen, this is an unlikely team in the final. You would expect maybe we'd see Lake Hill, maybe we see Gorge, but this Comox Valley United side is the reason there's no Gorge here. You know what, uh, this is David. Uh, Vic West is obviously Goliath. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know what, Comox is here. They they work hard, and they yeah they took down Gorge in the semifinals via PKs. You know what, they deserve to be here, and uh, it's going to be a battle. So as they're delivering the starting 11s here, the smoke is being let go. The supporters are rowdy. You love to see it at a cup final. I'm glad that we're inside a secure booth. <laughs> But the starting 11s are both sides. Starting for Vic West, Michael Asong in goal. No uh, Jack Garner for this one, so no heroics from the Spectrum uh, graduate this year. Uh, Daniel Pritchard, Peter Schale. Yes, that Peter Schale is on the back line. The Halifax Wanderer, the Victoria Highlander, Peter Schale, which that raised a few eyebrows when I saw that on the team sheet. Um, Salem Almardi, Tori Barbin, Victor Chen, Dorian Kolopaisis, Nicholas Halam, Barry Hooten, Ian Wibley, and the ever-present Patty Nelson making a formidable Vic West 11. How do you poke any holes in that line of Vince? Uh, you know what? You don't. And that's why they are undefeated this year. That's why um, they've won a lot of silverware this year. And that's why they're the team to beat this year. A 16-2-0 of the 58 points available, they took 54 of them. That's absurd dominance. Yeah, I can't say that I've seen a higher title or t total in my tenure. Um, I know Bays in 2013-ish had an undefeated season, um, but more ties. So, uh, um, yeah, this is an impressive year this year for the Greens, and uh, 
Whew. Wow. They're going to be tough. For the Comox Valley United in their red and black, they have sent forward in this 11 in goal, Justin Black. In front of him, Owen Ray Harris, Angus Heyman, Gokhan Avsil, Pella Campbell, Finn Collins Mann, Matthew Dooling, Charlie Purcell, Zach Stinson, Kade Tsushima, and Liam Worth. It's going to be an all-hands-on-deck approach. There was no real standout score for Comox, but they are getting it done by committee here in the Cup. They've got five goals from Dueling, three from Purcell. They've got another about a, five or so people with each with a goal apiece. It's going to require something out of nothing here for Comox to be able to get through. But they at least have an incredibly routing tra rowdy traveling support section, and I could not be happier to see all the supporters from Comox coming down yeah, to cheer absolutely. on their side. Now they have a whole busload that came down, and uh, they're pumped and good to go. And player-wise, I, I think you need to watch for Charlie Purcell. Just a beauty little player out of the youth sports um, segment. And you know what? He's really helped turn this team around. Comox, they work hard. They're going to come at you. They're going to dig. They're going to work. They're not going to give up. But now they just you know that extra talent with Charlie Purcell, just such a, a great, great pickup for them. And um, they're going to need to be firing on all cylinders here today in order to beat this green team. So with the coin toss done, the sides will be swapped over. And we will get ready for the first of 45. You know what? We don't usually talk about officials. We usually don't. But, uh, <laughs> and I hope I don't put the jinx on him now, but Nathan Bird's out there today, and he's working his, uh, what, uh, at least his seventh uh, Jackson Cup final, maybe. I know I'm, I'm pulling numbers right now. He's been in a lot. He's been a top official of the year every year in the VISL for the past, you know, 10 years. Um, it's great to see him out there and the crew that he's got out there today. The referees, they, they work on their craft and it it's doesn't end. The season will end. They'll keep going. It's, it's nice to see them get to this level and be able to sort of say, hey, I worked all year. I worked my, you know, my butt off all year and now I'm here because, you know, like the players, they deserve a shot. So um, we don't give enough accolades, I think, to the officials, uh, to Nathan Bird and crew. All four of them out there, um, top-notch year, and, and hopefully I just didn't jinx you. Well, considering that we are still in this country with something of an official's epidemic, as it's so tough to get referees to want to come into the game, any praise we can show to real talent in our officiating crews, I'm more than happy to dole it out here. It looks like it will be Vic West kicking off to start this. Patty Nelson, you see 10 in green there. Alongside 11, Matthew Dooling, two forwards to watch for. But, I mean, there's a name in Victoria soccer that you, ca you can't not hear for the last, what is it, decade now, Patty Nelson? You know what? He's been on the scorer's leaderboard um, pretty much every one of those years. He's won it uh, uh, five or six times, anyway. He's been Div 1 MVP four times. Um, the only player in VISL history to receive the award, the J.D. Hunter Award, four times. And that's with uh, up there with the likes of Drew Ferguson, Nick Gilbert, etc. So... Well, can he do it again? It's Ian Wibley getting us started for Vic West, looking for Cup 24 in 2024. They got their first since 1989 last year in that penalty shootout. They'll be looking for a little more comfort here, but Comox may have something to say about that. Let's see how we go. Daniel Pritchard going long. He was in that lineup last year. Little header forward there and cleared. Chasing this down, Nicola Pisces. Knocks it back. Peter Schale. Again, you are, that is not an illusion. That is <laughs> the one, the only, the big German, Peter Schale, patrolling the back line for Vic West. What a pickup. Yeah, what a beast back there. I mean, jeez, that's a great last-minute pickup, that's for sure. Coming out wide now. They'll look to try and build over the left here. Nelson is waiting for it. Pritchard stops, takes his time. He has the greatest luxury of time perhaps he's going to ever have in his defensive career, considering who his partner is today and on the run now wide that's Ian Wibley looking for space it'll roll over the end line though for a goal kick a stern challenge but well defended and that may be the theme of the evening for the Comox back line as you see Owen Ray Harris there five in red seeing off that challenge they will have to defend today a lot of uh, superstar power scoring power pace for the Vic West uh, um, squad up and down the pitch so they're going to be busy back there and 
Ball already heading back towards, but a nice little flick there that time by Gokhan Afsil. Big West immediately challenging for it. But good tenacity in midfield there. Charlie Purcell not giving up on that. You said earlier, one to watch for Vince. He showed it there. Although, it looks like he's given up a... An advantage was played there on a prior foul. So that'll be a free kick for Vic West being brought back to the spot of the infraction. Different class there again by the referee. Looked for the advantage. Tried to play the advantage. Player Wibley didn't really get one. Free kick is given. Perfect. The way it should be done. Shalit, lovely low ball. Could hit any number of targets, but the run was just a step slow. Rolls right to black. When you've got a top distributor sitting in your center back line, that's gonna that's that's a luxury few teams can have. Nice touch though. That was a good counter by Katie Shugashima as he got the ball forward from Zach Stinson. And Nelson will watch that roll to black. And Comox don't look like they want a counterpunch here. It's, it's, again, we're only a few minutes in, but they don't look like the traditional sort of counterpunch formation you'd see in a David versus Goliath setup. No, I think they're going to wait, and they're going to wait, and they're going to try waiting. And um, the chances for them, I don't see a plenty, but they will uh, pick and choose a time for a press and have to gamble a bit, right? Absolutely. That back line right now. Campbell, Harris, Mann, and Stinson staring down a not insignificant attacking trio here of Vic West. And it almost got it through there, but good read by Campbell. Kolopais is trying to dance through. He's turned back. Now you begin to see the two banks of five start to show up here for Comox as they wait for that ball and they, the patience pays off and Vic West is forced to recycle. Now they go along with Kolopais is sending that out wide. And now Nicholas Hallam getting in touch with the ball, leaving it there. Shala has Pritchard waiting for it. That's where it'll go. Sugishima watches on. Shala. Long balls, looking for Nelson. It's not going to get to him, but it does go under the boot of Stinson. Thankfully, no contact was made, and it's a goal kick regardless. He'll let us know later that he planned it out that way. It was, it was a clearly a mind <laughs> game. It was a trick. I could touch yeah. this. I don't want to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Black sends it out. Uh, that one goes over the head of Stinson. I don't think any amount of, uh, amount of fisherman's tails are going to get you a... <laughs> We'll get you a pass on that one, but be that as it may, Hooten sits a throw in. And Pritchard over to Shala. And now the possession game begins to start for Vic West as they can start to try and see where the hole is in this two banks of five now. Forget the two four, it's a two bank of five defense. Nice pressure shown there by Dueling to try and press and force it back. So Gashima in the mix as well. Now stepping up is Purcell. But Cola Pisces is having no problems there. He'll send that on the deck right up the middle. It's a lovely long ball and it falls, but it is Nelson getting to it. It was past Wibley, it's for Nelson. Nelson he gets way under that though. The Comox supporters will jeer that all the way over to the bleachers. Somehow I expect that will be the first shot of many on the afternoon for <laughs> one Patrick Nelson. I think it's very respectful of the Comox fans to appreciate the shot that Patty Nelson <laughs> took there, even though it missed by a bunch. But you know what? I think they're just being respectful and appreciative. Does that work? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Black. Thought about short and said uh, sends everyone long. And they're all going to overload the far side of the pitch. Fortunately, the only head they found there was one wearing a green jersey. And it looks like it was an unfair jump, too. They're going to stop that for a foul called. And Comox will get a free kick out of it. So they get a chance to build something from a not horrible position on the pitch. And they're again looking route one. Why do they decide to go with this? Ray Harris with the long ball. It is flicked on. It's a good job. I think it was by Tsukushima to actually get above that. 
Oh, I lie, that might have been Stinson. Regardless. Oh, a bit of a tumble there on the far side by Barry Hooten. And they do call that. And I was wrong earlier, that was um, Tooling who'd gone for the header earlier for Comox. Anyway, no further card on the play, but Hooten is a... Uh, Hooten's tumble does uh, earn the foul for Vic West, and now Pritchard over to Shallot. Goes long again, he's at Wibley and Nelson. Nelson makes the header. I think he was looking for Wibley, but he'd already made the run, had Wibley. Black reads it well. Black ops for a little bit of a drop kick. Directly at Pritchard. Forced to play it out, and that will be a throw. Route one ball, working in that case. It will be Stinson to take this throw. Stinson goes central. A little flick up. Sugushima trying to get around Pritchard, can't. Chen trying to run that through. Keeps his feet. But one back, battling midfield by Comox, but now they have numbers committed. And there's a seam here to run the channel. That ball is lacking, and Komok gets in front of it. Stinson. Stinson goes central. In behind, dueling that time. And first few touches of the ball we've seen there for Worth. In that left hand side. After a brief spell of possession to start the game, Vic West seemed comfortable to try Route 1 as well here, which is an interesting choice for them. I mean, they have the targets in Wibley and Nelson to make it work. And more importantly, they have the distributors sitting in midfield and again in central defense to make that work. They'll get a throw in here on the near side as well. Chen earning that. Going by Hooten. All the way back it goes. Michael Asong, his first touch of the ball all game. The black goalkeeper's kit for Vic West. Shallot up the middle. Salem Almardi making moves there. He's already done some distributing, has Almardi. And foul called there. I think, he, I think it was the second touch there on the return ball. Might have been Worth who fouled his man on the far side there. And they will take it from a decent looking position. Bit far to test the goal directly, but there's probably more than a few good header options on this delivery. Who do they go for? Headed clear, it was a good read that time. That might have been Dueling who got up for that. Well, Marty with the throw. Pritchard. Offside flag goes up. Promising attack brought to an end there, and they'll have Black take this one long. As Owen Ray Harris thought about that, then immediately saw his goalkeeper behind him and said, nah, let's let the guy with the big kick do it. And they opt to fake it anyway and go short. Wibley does get on. Trying to muscle his way forward there. And it does go the way of Comox United. Charlie Purcell's efforts on the far side. Earning his side a throw. Tyler Campbell on the far side there was initially had it. But that throw will go right out. And that will be the quest coming back the other way. They go quickly. Wibley. Black makes sure that goes nowhere else. And they'll just play it out quickly and they'll keep going. Stinson under pressure. Up the side they go. But not able to keep that one in was dueling. Pritchard. Shala. 
couple different options. Nelson switched sides and come a little deeper here, leaving Wibley as the lone attacker up front for Vic West. Now they try that. It was a different idea to try to get Hallam to be the provider. Definitely a different look, but the connection wasn't there. And now it'll be Afsil looking long. Sukushima's trying to split the D, but Shala, who's about, a, I want to say, a foot taller, <laughs> nods that one away. Worth follows up. Purcell, little flick on. Sukushima, nice back heel. Worth has it. First time ball from Worth does not find the six yard boxes worth of net. But I give him credit that he took that on the volley and had a go. That was quick ball movement from Comox to put themselves in a shooting position. This is basically how they're going to have to do this, is speed, Vince. They're not going to be able to win a physical battle any day of the week against that Vic West backline, but they can move the ball a little faster. We saw some of that flare on display just now. Speed, hard work. That, you're right, that's, that's their only try, times to, uh, that are going to beat the Vic West squad. That's, as you know, talent-wise. A little bit of everything out there. Worth. Coming back to help, gets that forward, dueling. Tsukushima was, uh, Tsukushima was calling for it, excuse me. Purcell loses out. Clipped forward that time by Chen. And keeping their feet. Nice little poke forward. Chance here on the far side for Hallam. And will win the throw out of it. That ironic cheer from the crowd is the clearance there. I believe that was a clearance by Campbell. Ended up going into one of the practice nets behind the uh, behind the benches. Sadly, those do not count. It's my understanding that the practice <laughs> nets do not count. We did have a brief respite from the rain, but it is coming back now. Though what island soccer game isn't complete without at least a little bit of misting on the pitch at some point. Almardi tried the first time ball, couldn't make a connection. Too many bodies in the way. Only clear to the edge of the line. Chen, nice turn. Holds possession. Shields from Purcell. Stutter step keeps going. I think one move too many as that midfield closed up for Comox. Tsukushima still buzzing around. Trying to be a nuisance. Nelson, first time ball. No problems for Black there. Black goes long. Worth. Such a jousting match there with Barbin. Throw will go Vic West's way. And they'll bring that in the midfield. First time ball for Wibley. Stepping in front of that was Finn Collins' man. Now Stinson. Has to escape a decent high pressure for Vic West. And they do manage to keep it in as well briefly. You see the, re the redirect attempt there being made. I believe that was by Purcell. No, I tell a lie. That was Dueling who'd made that move. And Hallam catches that with the outside of the boot and then catches the outside of the praise once again from the Comox faithful. Calling for it there is Chen. He's got a few lanes here up to open to pass with. Just to go near side. Almardi. Pritchard. Shalit. Long run going on the far side there. Colopisis is waiting for it. And instead it goes forward. Turn again is Hallam. Nice little cutback. And has won a foul there. That's a dangerous position to give Vic West a free kick. And who wants to try and be the hero here? Well, no surprises who steps forward here. Patrick Nelson immediately in front of the ball. Almardi and Wibley are there as well. Even Shalas said that any four of them could belt this thing in. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Shalas is doing a decent amount of playing from the back. I mean, so, I mean, it's... And he is going to take the more traditional position of a center back, providing some disruption further forward. Almardi, though, screens, leaves it. Nice little dummy. 
Oh, this is a training ground play. Can they get it in? Black is there. Oh, they nearly got it. But Justin Black is unimpressed and holds his ground and his nerve. That was a sneaky little training ground play. Comox do win themselves a free kick now on the other side. The counter working well for what would technically be the visitors, though you wouldn't guess it by the raucous fan support coming from our side of the pitch. And standing over this one, Biazzo. He's got some targets to pick with, or to play with here. Worth, Purcell. Floats it and curls it to the back post. There's a clean header. Ooh! Some hands went up thinking it had gone in, but it was the wrong side of the post. That close to a stunning punch. That close. You always love to see a cup set. I don't think anybody would expect a cup set here until you get a hint like that and think, oh, wait a minute. There's still a stone in David's sling yet. Shallot trying to place one down the side. Does stay in. Intercepted. That brief scare back the way. Now Sugishima has found his way in behind. He won't be able to get to the ball ahead of Pritchard, but he does manage to angle it. Pritchard is playing to call a Pisces. Purcell tracks him down off the back that time. Stays in and does come off the back of, I believe that was Barbin. And Komox back to the attack. We played roughly halfway through the first half of this Sir John Jackson Cup final. It's Vic West nil, Comox United nil. Oh, the chance taken somewhat uh, desperately there in midfield. I think that was by Adsil. Goes well wide, but put it down on the board as a shot on towards net. Not on net, but towards. We'll give him credit for that. No, it's a fair point, Vince. It's, this is a Vic West team that, as we said off the top, did one. They won all but two of their games, and those two games they drew. It's as close to a flawless season as you get. Forget Invincible, that was nearly, and I use this word sparingly, perfect. And if you want to beat a near-perfect team, you cannot waste chances. Nice touch there to bring that one down by Hooten. And he's fouled as well. Comox's supporters disagree, though unfortunately none of them are in the center of the pitch. Although I suppose that's probably for the best, all things considered. <laughs> It'll be a free kick from a decent position here. Pull up Pice is over this one. Leave all the scoring options out wide. I think the idea here will be to try and run someone in from the edge of the box. Can't imagine Pull up Pice is going to go for goal here. But he does curl one in. There's the late run, but Black is equal to it. I think it was Wibley who made that late run to try and make the flick. He got good connection on it too, but Black equal to that one. And it was Wibley as well. Barbin has to go back to defend against this as Tsukushima was trying to get free. And not fouled. That was a pretty hard shove. The referee's fine with it. it was shoulder to shoulder. Uh, Barbin is an absolute tank back there. Good, nice, clean player. Plays hard. Um, unfortunately, that player just bounced off him like uh, like he was a bit of a brick wall. I, I get the feeling that Tsukushima is going to be in for a rough night if he has to go up against Shalit, Barbin, Richard, <laughs> and whoever else decides to cycle into this back line. Yeah, I think he's going to have to go with pace over uh, strength. After sure. Offside flag goes up there as Nelson was a step forward of that ball. Comox Valley United, they scored only 16 goals all season long in league play. Less than a goal per game, tied them for second worst in D Division One of the VISL. 
It's not how many, it's when you score them. And when it comes to the cup, Comox Valley United has scored when they've needed to to get to this dance. And sliding in there with confidence and a nice tackle by Finn Collins, man. For, a, for the stakes as high as they are here, Vince, you're seeing some really clean play and really good tackling on display from both sides here. Yeah, you know what, Rituro, it's early. Uh, something tells me as soon as that first goal, as soon as that team gets the first goal, the temperature of this game is going to go up. It's, it's been fine so far, no issues. But uh, you know what, the goal, the change will happen once a goal is scored. And uh, well, I guess it all depends on who scores it too, right? I do not disagree with a single part of that. Pritchard reels this in. Staring down Purcell. Shallow. Shallow looking long. He's found Elmardi. Elmardi keep this in, he can. Right to the corner flag with it. Tight quarters tries to go back towards the end line and does. Tight quarters here, but Salem Almarty keeps it. Low ball blocked and thumped up into Rosette, or at least D. I couldn't quite see Mara into the broadcast booth, but one of the upper letters, one assumes, be a throw in here for Vic West. And that throw not uh, reeled in exactly as was drawn up that time. Goal kick, Comox. I don't know about you, Rotaro, but it almost sounds like Comox got more fans here than Vic West. I'm beginning to wonder that. <laughs> I mean, I know we saw the green smoke off the opening for the player introductions. So we know that there are Vic West supporters here. I wonder what that bus ride was like down from Comox. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they're pretty jacked up. A lot of Red Bull and, uh, and other th such uh, beverages consumed on the way down to get them ready for the match. Full of courage, as they say? Yes. One word for it anyway. Worth bringing that one down. Shallot. Let's that go no further. Doing thought about going for Thinks the better of it. And now they'll try and again find Wibley. Nelson coming in late. That seemed to work well for him. But this time, a very determined Campbell. Ushers that one over and is fouled in the process. Free kick for Comox. Throw in now, just about the midfield line. It's taken by Campbell. As the longer this game goes on, we talk about waiting for that first goal and for that game state to change, Vince. As this game goes on and Comox grows into it, the fear goes down and down and down. They aren't playing right now like they're afraid of what Vic West can do to them. Well, and really, they have nothing to lose here. Uh, there's no doubt everyone's thinking that they are the David and the quest is the Goliath. So, um, you know, the longer this game can say 0-0, zero, zero, you know, the, the better chances are for Comox. Um, and that's just a simple way of, of dumbing it down for all of us, <laughs> but uh, that really is the story. They've already got the league title. This would be a double for Vic West if they can pull in a Jackson Cup. For Comox, it would be a piece of silver unexpectedly. But speaking of unexpected, forward comes Purcell. Sweeping back, though, and making sure it was Barbin. Purcell found a little bit of daylight, but Barbin was equal to the task. And that coming over here is Harris. That one is blocked, though. Poor clearance. That might cost as Hallam is there, but no a handball, I think, called on the play. And that giveaway goes unpunished. We start from Comox. Looking for dueling. Richard gets there first. Despite the size mismatch, good header there by Absil. Wins that aerial duel. Stinson. Purcell to ground. No call. Collins man. Technically on net. And I don't think even the most audacious defender would call that a shot. Maybe Shalit. But anyway, Pritchard. Speaking of Shalley, I remember watching when he was wearing black and gold for Highlanders, and you knew he was going to... It was only a matter of time before somebody came and grabbed him from higher up the ranks. And it was that's, no that's going back a few years. When did he play with the Highlanders? That was 20... I want to say 18? It was before yeah. the Canadian Premier League started. Yeah. And he went straight over to Halifax and has been a fixture there. Oh, 
Well, he didn't play this past year, though, did he? No, he did not. Well, it doesn't look like he's been off for a year. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to get our first corner of the afternoon here. As that ball goes deep, and Almar, do you see there, carrying this over to the corner flag. He'll leave it. And instead, Nicole Pisces will have set piece duties here. West leaving options near the back post here. It's where Shale and Nelson are hanging out. And Marty is there as well. There's the delivery of Pisces goes near post and cleared. Might be the loudest cheer I've heard for a first half quarter clear in a good long while. <laughs> Barbin looking long for a second phase ball. Shale is still up there as is Wibley. And having to help that over the bar was Black not taking any chances. He'll concede the corner but rather that than the goal. Nice service in the box there from Barbin. It's, uh, and yeah, Calvin had to be sharp there. Second corner in as many minutes here for Vic West. Ball passes. Falls. And trying to pick up that up there was Hallam. And it is kept in briefly. There's still some possession. There might be a second phase ball on, but they will call a foul as down to the, there went Hallam, I believe. It was Chan might have been going down. Taken quickly. They didn't call this back? No, they're going to let that stand. I don't know if I agree with that, that quick play. They had a chance to set up something deadly, and they, I don't think everyone was on the same page for, well, that, for that play. That quick play works if they're all on the same page, but mm. if they're not, it sure is a squandered opportunity. It's a high risk, high reward, and I don't, I don't know that I'd be comfortable with the risk this early in a cup final match but the, that's why I'm up here and not on a coach's bench. <laughs> Tells you everything you need to know right there. <laughs> Throw in for Vic West coming up deep in their side of midfield although they'll move this forward to more or less midfield. Hallam turns. Booger Wibley offside. It's a high line being played by Comox, and they're being consistent and firm with it. And the, the offside flag keeps going up. I can count on one hand the number of attacks they've made that have been on the right side of the assistance flag so far. Comox are holding their nerve on that back line. They are, and uh, against some speedsters themselves, so not an easy job. Shallot deals with that. Headed straight back to Sugishima. He's in a decent position here. Following up. Purcell and Julian, that's a hard tackle. Ouch. That wasn't coming together, but they're saying it was incidental. I think it might have been more had the ball more to do with it than the actual player, but either way, that was not a fun collision for Charlie Purcell. He's up and moving, though. And that ball will fall for Pritchard, who pops it forward. Dueling trying to provide some sort of nuisance. And it does force Big West back. Two attackers lined up high on this near side. Wibley starts his run. Marty's available. Well, to keep it there was Hallam. I don't think Black was expecting that uh, that deflection there. Nearly fooled him. It ultimately went wide. Black doesn't even concede the goal kick for that. More of those rookie bona fides being shown there by Nicholas Hallam, as you referred, as you alluded to earlier there, Vince. A song will get a rare touch on the ball here. Sporting the pink socks. Now those are pink. You will not miss him when the floodlights hit. Absolutely not. Shallow going forward. Nelson has dropped deeper. He's trying to play creator now. He's got Wibley and Almarty forward as Cole, well as Cole Pisces. Playing the one-two with Hallam. Borbin is first back. And they'll get a throw-in out of it though. Barbin did well to hold his ground. They take it quickly. But only uh, as far. And the waiting leg of, uh, I believe that was Angus Heyman had come over to get a brief touch on it. So a quiet game, haven't said his name much or at all. Angus Heyman in the midfield of Comox. And what does Vic West have lined up here? They go for the throw in for Patrick Nelson at the corner of the box. They go back to Chen. Chen curls one over, flicked down by Cola Pisces. Almarty turning. First time ball, curled back post, headed Ooh. clear. That needed to be headed oh. clear, and Pella Campbell did not miss that one. 
you had two Vic West forwards uh, waiting for that one via header and one on the on the boot in case the header was missed. So very timely clearance. Quick restart on that free kick. Much more uh, everyone on the same page. And Salem Almarty puts it on the deck. Wibley on the run. Black should beat him to this and does. About 12 minutes-ish for the first half is up. Nil all between defending Sir John Jackson Cup champs, Vic West FC, and Comox Valley United. And current Garrison Cup champions, and current Cup Winners Cup champion. Yeah, they've, they've picked up a lot of hardware this year. So, that, so they're on treble already? So they're going yeah, for the, the, the Cup for the Winners quad. Cup. Yeah, the Cup Winners Cup is that uh, winner of last year's Jackson Cup versus the winner of last year's Division One as they face off against each other. So they played each other the first game of the year. Vic West beat Lake Hill, winning the Cup Winners Cup. Here we go quickly to the opposing end for once for Comox, but Chalet quick to snuff that one out. Danger's not over though. I should have come off Almarty last and it did. It'll be a throw from Comox. Up comes Stinson. Headed down. Avsil back to the area, flicked on. Chested down and then cleared with no nonsense whatsoever. Whipley backs up. Holding his crown there for dear life was Finn Collins' man. Purcell holds, turns, one on three. Still made a decent effort of it. Overcomes Dueling. He has some space to work with now. Dueling out wide. Sugishima. Nice run. Avsil gets a deflection. Won't go any further. Comox are not backing down. And again with the throw. Goes short this time. Gets the return. Blocked. It'll be another throw. They'll run that exact same play again. And they go central. Cheeky backflip there from Dueling. Flick of the heel. Up seal. Let's that go. And now sent forward. Heyman with actually a nice ball there. Unfortunately, it cut through everyone, including the forwards. And the song lets that go forward to Shale. Kulapisis. Brief rain that is restarted has stopped again. So it remains a uh, well irrigated turf, but otherwise a passably dry conditions out there as far as the sky goes. Multiple attempts there. Referee said none of them were ultimately legal in the end, and the persistence of Tori Barbin. Results in a free kick in another spot. We saw the trickery of the set piece play here before. I don't think they're going to go to that same well again, Vince. This looks a little more traditional. Only one in the wall for Comox at that. So they'll pace it off. And now back comes Nelson. Maybe he's seen something he likes. Actually, they're doing some substitutions here. Quick double sub as off comes Hooten and off comes Nelson. Quick personnel swap here. Huh. Well, now everyone's getting involved, even the manager's getting involved with this set piece. We'll get that sorted in a second here. There's the delivery, back post, looking for Shalit, doesn't reach him. It did actually come off his head though. In some fashion, as it is a goal kick for Comox. Oh, you know what, they just had to send uh, Nelson off for some sort of tape issue or blood, maybe blood on the knee or something. Mm. Okay. Have that attended to, he's back. All right, so Nelson is, I was about to say, it was a very strange decision to bring Nelson off, but yeah. that's fine. Hooten is still off, though, and I think I did see who replaced him. Theo Weissmiller has come on, yeah. 29 green. So he will make a, try to make an impact as we see the end of this half approaching. Almardi gets passed. Puts it low in the middle, deflected. And enough deflection done to blunt the attack. Well, 
Black Ops to throw this time. Oh, Jesus. Awkwardly taken. <laughs> Never seen someone neck the ball before, but... <laughs> Dueling does not appear to be any worse for wear. Ah, he's had a good chuckle about it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Chen with a throw back to Pritchard over to Shallot. Halam is central. Warbin is wide. Wibley tries to come short for it. Defense waiting for it. Dueling forward. That goes to Vice Miller. Chen. Steps past one, nice ball out wide on Marty. Hits three different bodies, or two at least, but it falls kindly to Colapisis. Dorian Colapisis on the deck, Nelson. And Dueling can get away from this, but Chen does well to step in. Some thoughts from Purcell, there should have been a call there, referee isn't interested. Absolutely, there's a shove to Chen, not called, and forward comes Almarty into a dangerous area here. A hopeful swing of the leg there from Salem Almarty. No trouble there for Black. Walsh, Purcell, Sugishima, they'll all watch Shali calmly head that one back to midfield. Walsh, though, comes away with it. Nice little flick, finds Purcell. They play it back. Absil goes long. He's asking for a run from Sugishima, and he's going to get it. Sugishima almost! A song had to be quick there, and he had to be careful. It's got to be tough for a keeper, you know. He's been quiet all half, hasn't had to do much. Uh, but he was tested there, and he, you're right, he had to be quick there, or else uh, you know, Tsukushima was in all alone, and he would have put up the lone goal to the red team. It would have been the highlight of the half either way. You have to think if Tsukushima gets that shot the way he wants it. Cola Pisces has been drifting all over that right side of the field, almost like a free winger roll, or a heavily inverted wing back. Take your pick. Shallot tries to get the return to Hallam and does get it through. Barbin uh, is unable to control. They'll try again. They'll go long. Oh, it's a very long one, but over the bar. Black had he had space to track back for it. I think that was one of those uh, crosses that turned into an accidental shot, which almost caught the keeper. Uh, Justin Black sort of snoozing a bit, but you know what? He recovered nicely and, and ensured that uh, no damage. Of course, if it goes in, the claim is, oh, I saw him off his well, line. Of yeah. course, of course. <laughs> Remains nil all. About five-ish minutes to go in the half. Using the unofficial retro clock we have here in the broadcast booth. Still the nice popped up there. Walsh will try and get under it and does. Gets a touch to it. Does maintain possession. And then popped forward. Shala regains it. But second ball was won. Shala decides I've had enough of this and strides forward himself, breaking through four players. Peter Shala is angry. Slides it forward. Wibley can't get the shot off, but he was offside anyway. Flag went up. But when Peter Shala decides he's had enough, he's just going to walk through the entire team, apparently. Wow. That well, reminded me of watching my kid playing U10 soccer at times when he just decided to dance a few, a few different kids. Wow, that was impressive, Peter. Ultimately, though, the flag goes up once again. That's been the biggest ban. Full credit to Comox's defending. Let's give them their flowers here. But the biggest saviors of ours has been the offside flag, stopping a lot of these attacks. Which in itself is good defending, right? Mm -hmm. That last line of defense is properly placed, doing the job. Shallow. Ops to knock. Oh, Tsukushima gets a foot in front of that one. And tries his little distance. Actually gets a... That's going to be on target. And a corner late. Katie Tsukushima, what are you doing? And can I see more of it, please? Wow. And you don't see those little blunders coming back out of, uh, you know, shall I? Probably a little bit lax days go with that. Uh, and full credit to Shugashima for 
for reading it nicely, but uh, wow. He's been a buzzsaw all half. He has not stopped running yeah. at Pritchard and Shallow, and he gets his reward here. It's a late corner. First of the game for Comox. They put it high to the back post, but they have a body! But not wow. able to get that on target. Finn Collins, man, knows he missed a big one. He wasn't marked. Absolutely unmarked at the back post. Wow. It, is it strange to say that Vic West got off lucky? Oh, absolutely. How that didn't go in, I'm still in, in shock. Back the other way, Vic West. They do well to hold off. They do get the foul. Nelson doing the interplay there with Hallam. I have to imagine Comox go into halftime if this scoreline stays level, feeling like they are suddenly giant killers. They've still got 45 minutes to go, but yeah. you, you put up this kind of first half performance, anything's possible now in a cup. Long ball there. Forward comes Dueling. Pritchard gets it away cleanly. They're really picking and choosing their time on that high press though, aren't they? They are. Now it's Chen. He wanted the ball earlier, now he does eventually get it. Plays it out wide for Wibley. Crossing into the middle. Well, that was destined for exactly one person, Patty Nelson. Didn't make it. Wibley will try again to Chen. Nice step by Chen, gets inside on both Dueling and Purcell, puts it low. But the run from Wibley was not there ahead of the boot. Collins man. Now, I do not envy Finn Collins man and Owen Ray Harris this afternoon. They are doing their absolute best and they can't really do anything less than that against this side. Chen, long ball into the box, grabbed by Black. Field. Epson goes down, play goes on. Weissmiller. The U of Weissmiller with the ball on the deck to Wibley. Wibley, central. Nelson, this is where he likes to set up, but he's closed down immediately. Second effort goes high. Uh, Hallam, he got that to his left foot, his dangerous left foot, but I was expecting something a little bit better out of him, but uh, he ended up bajoing it. He really bit at that chance hard. That's not something you would expect. Like he had, he did have, again, easy for me to say up of here. Course, it looked course. like he had time to take a touch yeah. on that, at he least. Did. Be that as it may, it remains nil all. And then Justin Black gets what must be his 20-odd uh, goal kick of the half. <laughs> this is why you don't skip leg day, kids. Rain comes back down here in Langford. Be a throw the way of Comox. This will be the home of the 2024 Provincial Cup Championship game as well. All here April 26, 27 weekend. BC Soccer will be hosting their Provincial Cup finals here for the men and women. Oh, that should be a good event. Oh, that's going to be fun. According to the unofficial broadcast booth clock, we are into stoppage time. We'll see what the referee sees fit to add on. I can't imagine there will be too, too much. I'm waiting for them to see the secret code and they sh shift to the other officials, but I haven't seen it yet. Shift it there. And flicked out wide by Absil. Walsh coming in for it. Heyman is there in relief. Absil keeps it, goes forward instead. Purcell trying to get there. Can't come to the other bodies. Referee allows it. Plays advantage. Good call there to play advantage. Chen. Almardi. Almardi hooks inside. Puts one in looking for Wibley. It's an awkward clearance, but it's a good one. Harris did enough. And it'll be a corner late. Has overcome the Comox supporters to give the gears to Wibley. Headed clear. Danger not over though. They'll get a second phase ball out of this. Chen. And they'll just get this high and into the zone. Shala gets his head to it. No surprise there, but wide of the net with defenders all over him. I mean, you kind of have to triple mark Peter Shala, don't you? It's the only way, really. And Komaksu enough, and there it is. 
That is the end of the first half after 45 minutes. Comox Valley United have withstood the best that Vic West can throw at them. They are 45 minutes away from making things very interesting. Halftime, it is nil all between Vic West FC and Comox Valley United. My name is Rituro and I will be back with the second half of this Sir John Jackson Cup final after halftime.
Well, the reins are back in Langford, but so are the players. And that's what matters because we have a second half of the Sir John Jackson Cup Final. And I am so glad to be here for it. My name is Rituro alongside Vince Greco. It is the 2024 Jackson Cup. And after 45 minutes in red with black and white, Comox Valley United, nil. Vic West on your broadcast left in the green and white, nil. It is a David versus Goliath match on paper. First place, Vic West against seventh place, Comox Valley United. Vic West won 16 of their 18 games this league season, drew the other two, an undefeated season, and yet they have looked not entirely dominant when cut, put up against a Comox Valley United team that is showing absolutely no fear. They've held out for 45 minutes of Comox Valley. They've even had some very stunningly good chances, good looks at goal. None of them for either side have found the back of the net, Vince, and we are 45 minutes away from a sprint to the finish. Yeah, you you put that together nicely, Rituro. Huh? I'd be the first one to say that I'm shocked that it's 0-0 right now, and uh, I think many people are, but uh, you know what? Just goes to show you. Um, any given Sunday, in this case, any given Saturday. And uh, it looks like we're back at it. Let's see what happens. Now again, seventh place in the league, that's all well and good, but when it comes to cup competition, anything can happen. Upsets, or as we love to call them, cup sets, happen all the time, and Comox Valley have had their fair share. In the round of 16, they defeated Salt Spring FC 3-1. In the quarterfinals, they somewhat surprisingly took down Couch and Axis 1-0, and then the big shocker in the semifinals, dumping heavy favorite Gorge FC 3-2. You would have thought for the world it would have been a Vic West Gorge final. Comox had something to say about that. They sure did. PKs, PKs against Gorge is how they won that match, and uh, a rather weird scoreline. 2-1 they won that PK, so there was a lot of saves and no misses. Um, so yeah, it was uh, a great match, and look, they're here. Steal Vice Miller, the only substitute from the first half was Vice Miller coming in for Vic West, replacing Barry Hooten. To the best of our knowledge, no other substitutions have taken pla place for either side. We'll let you know if that changes. But right now, Patrick Nelson with the long ball, looking for Nicholas Hallam. Going shoulder to shoulder, although he was the last one to touch that. Well defended by Pelly Campbell, and it will be a goal kick yet again for Justin Black. He's been the busier of the two goalkeepers, Vince, though I would suggest that is due to the sheer volume of goal kicks he has taken in the opening 45 minutes. Well, he's had to deal with a lot of crosses, a lot of through balls. He's had to be sharp. He's made a couple great saves. Um, but you know what? On the other end, Michael Song, he hasn't been busy, but he's had to be sharp when called upon or else, you know what? They could easily be down one nothing right now themselves. Oh, Sushima got caught there by Vice Miller and spotted by the referee. Spun right around there on that clip. And there'll be a light talking to, I think, for Vice Miller. Free kick just by the midfield circle for Comox Valley. Rotura, I'm getting a lot of calls from our friends back east uh, that are following along with the, uh, the live stream from Rogers. So uh, to them, just want to let them know that uh, we respect you watching. And please understand, this is the Coupe Jackson. That's Thank all I got from my French. Thank you for the translation. Much appreciated. We're now officially bilingual. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wibley splitting the D here, going out wide. Chance here. Salem, Almardi can't get the ball through. The Comox defense again collapsing. They've been doing it so far pretty well for the first half. And oh, a Ooh. volley! That would have been an absolutely sensational way to open the scoring, but over the net it goes. 
Oh, that had some venom behind it. Oh, was that Almarty or was that Colapaisis? That was I, Colapaisis. Oh, came wow, in. that came in with pace. Very nice volley. Wow. Yeah, they will fish that one out from somewhere well under the bleachers. That, uh, that is the, the Vic West I think we expected to see for the majority of the 45. And to be honest, we only saw that really in flashes. Yeah, you're right. You know what? They, uh, they've already come out with a, a deeper vengeance this half. I would, I, uh, I'm not sure I would want to be in either team's locker for that, uh, that halftime talk. I can only imagine the respective moods. Well, yeah. On the Colmock side, you got to think there, like, let's just keep doing the same. Let's keep battling. Let's keep working hard. And you know what? Let's try to finish off one of these chances. You know what? We can beat these guys. That's exactly what they're talking about. Vic West, I don't think that this had the same temperature in their change room, but. Oh, it is, uh, regardless of what was or wasn't said, it's all gotta be decided here on the pitch now. And that ball from Hallam was looking, I think, for Wibley, and instead it would be out for a throw. It's Wibley staying forward on this right side. Ian and Nelson have been somewhat interchanging, though Nelson seems to be dropping deeper and deeper the longer this match goes. I'm guessing because they want him more as a distributor to try and start the play rather than be the finisher. Meanwhile, Almarty trying to put pressure. Just thinking back now, there hasn't been many instances where Vic West has been the one pressing. They've been content to let Comox do the pressing, and it, it's resulted in moments like this occasionally, but. Vic West hasn't seen fit to respond in kind until just now. Let's see if that plays out. Meanwhile, nice little step there by Pritchard. Daniel Pritchard has been dealing with uh, Kate Tsugashima all afternoon, and he's, for the most part, managed to keep Tsugashima at bay, though full credit to the Comox board. He did get one glorious little chance out of nothing near the end of the first half. Got the side's first corner of the game out of it. So there is potential for damage to be done. Shalit going forward. Halam on the deck finds Wibley who's back to goal. Can't pull the trigger. Turns. Now he gets some help. Vice Miller. Pritchard. It's called Pice. No, Cole Pice is in centrally. That would be Borbin. Oh, it's a long ball. Very long ball. It was Chen make that who had drifted over to the left hand side. You know what? I thought Chen had a really good first half. Mm -hmm. You know, moved the ball a lot. Stuck in some tackles. Nice player. He was definitely calling for it a lot, especially when in the when things became something like it wasn't going to be a walkover for Vic West. He started to get really interested in having himself more involved in the play, which you want to see in a cup final. You want to see players like Chen who are, give me the ball, let me dictate tempo, let me make things happen. If for no other reason, because it leaves Nelson free to go forward. Black. Finds the head of Campbell. Well, I'm not sure that was his best goal kick of the evening, but he has done quite a few. Cole Pisces, nice little steal there. Off of Dueling. Hops his man as well. So plenty of him and Cole Pisces' step. Chen. Still holding on to it. Does manage to cut through Cole Pisces on the turn. Forced back. Get some help now from Pritchard. Weissmiller drops back to help. Popped up off the head of Avsil. Almardi was in the box. Ball falls and cleared. You know, that's one of the first uh, few times that we've seen sort of Comox, you know, um, not give up, but uh, just Pin sort of. back, certainly. Yeah, and just sort of clear it with no real direction. Vic West may have remembered that there are the, the favorites where they have decided to start playing like it, which, if you're a Vic West supporter, about time. And is Black going to take this one instead? Just think about it. Nope, it'll be, it will be Collins' man to take it instead. Shall it beat Tsugashima for that header? Copy, paste, repeat. Heyman. Didn't have a lot of action in that first half, but he does well to hold possession there. Well, you can see the idea there to get the turn. That was well read. Well dealt with by Barbin. 
He gets the throw now. Shallow. Try the far side. What a switch by oh, Shallot. Jeez. Finds Salem Almarty in space with the right boot. Oh. Doesn't miss the crossbar by much. Oh, wow. What a, you know what? That's about the third ball that Peter Shallot has made. Just, you know, a 40 yard tape to tape, boot to boot. Oh, what a great service. And, and Salem, I think he wants that one back. And Almarty is not really a bad target to go for. I mean, to be fair, you've got so many to aim for. You have Nelson and Wibley there as well. You don't have a bad choice in that entire setup to go to, which is incredible when you think about it. Ball now is Wibley. Now able to get there. Halam has been taken out of the play. And the ball does go out of play. That will be a corner. First of the half. I believe it's the fourth of the game for Vic West. Don't quote me on that. Well, gone are the days that we're using corner kicks as tiebreakers, so. <laughs> really? <laughs> Heck of a tiebreaker. Yeah. I might be dating myself there with that one. There it goes. Looking for Shale. Gets himself free. Not the guy you want to leave free. To be fair, he did shove off of two tackles. It's not like they deliberately left the big man completely open. I'm sure he'll want to have got that a little bit lower than he did. Black and the Comox goal will slow this down. And they will actually make a substitution here. This Comox will bring in some fresh legs. This will be their first substitution of the evening. I think I can say evening now because we're now almost a quarter to seven. And it will be Liam Worth coming out. We'll it's not a good little match, Liam. He was there when he needed to be. I'm sure he would have loved to have been a little more active, but it was you know, hard to find the space to do that against this Vic West side. And replacing him now, number 10, that'll be Nick Marinus. Uh, one of the Marinus boys, I got an interesting one here for you. At halftime, I was going for a little walk. Who did I run into? A Mr. Marinus. And why I refer to him as Mr. is he's got two boys playing in today's game. Nick for Comox and Bryce for Vic West. How does that happen? Well, it's funny because Bryce did sign with the, he was here earlier in the season, then moved away to Australia. And uh, I believe it was Australia. And then he flew back for today's game four days ago just to be in a, the final with his brother. So uh, I asked the dad who he was cheering for. His dad poli politely said no comment and, uh, and moved on. But it'd be nice to see the boys face off against each other. Um, yeah, just a neat little side story to it all. It's, I found it quite interesting. That is incredible. I do not envy the position of any parent who has to see uh, children face off in not just a game but a cup final match. Yeah, I, I, you know, I told them you should have one jersey that's got Green on one half and red on the other half. Oh, and Franken jersey? Yeah. Oh. But uh, I guess they couldn't get that sorted out for game day. In fairness, those, both those kits are abominations. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may, though, we'll leave my opinions on kit construction for another day. Right now, <laughs> it's Pritchard heading that down, and it'll be cleared. Whibley can't get to that one. And actually will get called for the offside. And it will be a Vic West substitution coming up now. So they begin to roll through their personnel. They have uh, decently stocked benches do both sides. And that is Hallam coming out of the pitch or out of the game. Looks like Dominic Colantonio coming in. Another familiar name to the Victoria soccer scene. And so with Colantonio in, I imagine he would be setting up nearby Smiller. So fresh midfield here for Vic West. As Pritchard manages to fend off some challenge actually there from Purcell and popped back and now can Vic West get a counter going not if the uh, stern back line of Comox a phrase I did not think I would be saying today <laughs> has anything to say about it and again I want to be clear here there is no disrespect intended towards the Comox Valley United faithful and their players it is more 
on paper, this should not be a nil-nil match, which is why matches are not won on paper. That is why you play the game, mm -hmm. I believe. And it's fun to watch, too. Yeah, I mean, sure. There is that. There is that. There is that element, too, of course. Throw in here for Vic West on the near side. Barbin. It's flicked up. Now Heyman will get a boot to it. Weissman lets that go. Bounces off there. A nice little touch from Nick Marinus. This will be a Comox throw in the attacking half. Campbell to take it. Down the line it goes. Marinus trying to keep this in and does. It's a touch. Goes central. Flicked back by Absil. I don't think that's going to stay in. Oh, it is actually. But only briefly. And it did come off of a Comox player last. Oh, did it stay in play? Actually, I, think it's, I don't think they actually went out for a goal kick. They're just going to play on here. Kalapaisis. Shallot. Puts it on the deck with a nice little bit of turn to it. Barbin. Central. Colantonio. Substitute already lively off the bench. Salem Almardi. Ooh, Gets nice. inside, lovely move, but can't follow it up. And Comox doing everything they can to make sure that nothing further comes into the penalty area. And now a chance for Chen here, she throws this into Colantonio. Pritchard from deep. Colapisis. Locked, that'll be a throw. unofficial broadcast clock. We're about 15 minutes into this second half, which would put us at the hour mark. Half an hour to go. Plus whatever the referee seems fit to add on as Pritchard nearly stripped of the ball there by dueling. It is still nil all between Vic West and Comox Valley United. Vic West now taking their time here. There is time on the clock, and they are seeing fit to use as much of it as they can. Barbin on the deck, looking for Wibley. Lays it back. And Colo Colo Antonio found a decent run there. Unfortunately, the ball wasn't with him. Black will throw that out wide. He's found a little bit of space here to work with. Komox quickly root one. Sugashimi gets oh. a touch to it, and a song nearly hung out to dry. That close. Sugashimi out of nothing. A root one play out of the, I want to say, 1950s UK handbook. <laughs> and he nearly gets it. And you know what? Hats off again to keeper Michael Asong. I mean, he's had literally nothing to do this half, really. But there he had to come up big on a great challenge. Wow, that was uh, top, of, top of his box, too. There's nothing behind him if that goes yeah. over. Um, barring the world's greatest sprint from Chalet, that's, that chip goes over. Oh, there, speaking of a chip there, Campbell gets clipped going down, and the referee will call this. Feeling a little bit of a knock from that, but should be good to go. This match between Vic West and Comox Valley is the third time the Vic West name has appeared on the scoreboard today. Three of the eight competing teams have had Vic West in them. In fairness, one of those matches, both teams were Vic West. So Vic West's Div 1, Div 3, and Div 4 teams have all been playing in cup finals this weekend. It's safe to say the Vic West program is doing quite well at the moment. You know what? They've had a great year. The only team that's not here this weekend is the Masters A. And, uh, but no, the rest of every other division was, was uh, represented here. They've had a great year. They're looking to make it back-to-back -back Jackson Cups to go with their other impressive haul of silverware this season. But Comox Valley United has decided that they would like to object in the best way possible. And fair play to them. They're making it look good. Pritchard goes long. Almardi wins that duel against Sinsu. Overcommitted and has to move back quickly. That ball on the deck, though, is past by the outstretched Wibley. He sees that black hat and picked it up quickly and forces the pickup. So 
unless they snuck a substitution in as it stands right now. Black and goal for Comox Valley. Stinson, Collins Van, Ray Harris, and Campbell on the back line. Heyman, Avsil, Dueling, and Purcell, and then Tsushima and Marinus forming that attacking core. For Vic West, Michael Song in goal. Tori Barbin, Daniel Pritchard, Peter Chalet, Dorian Kalapisis, Theo Weissmiller, Victor Chen, Dominic Colantonio, who just came in. Sugashima here, can't get past Chalet. Almardi, Nelson, and Wibley, the front three, and Almardi has it now for Vic West. And there's Wibley. Calling for it. Way up from the back as Pritchard has gone on a run here. Little flick. Nicole Antonio doesn't get through. And now there's a chance here. It's Sugashima. One on one against Chalet. Reinforcements are coming. The obstacle central. I think that was between the two intended targets. Dueling and Purcell. And instead it'll be Vic West going the other way. I'm wondering if Sugashima was caught in two minds about that. Which player yeah, he wanted to play on. Exactly right. I thought he was going to come down here near the near flag, but uh, thought differently himself, I guess. Nelson, he's found a man in space, it's Cole Antonio! That took a little bit of a hop that Black wasn't expecting, I don't think, he had to dive for it. Not a bad strike from Cole Antonio. One of the substitutes for Vic West, still waiting on the bench for Vic West, yet to see action. Tarek Almardi, Bryce Marinus, as Vince mentioned earlier, Matthew Bloom, and Mackenzie Cole. For Comox Valley, yet to see the pitch. Theo Fife, Noah Wilson, Joe Butcher, Marcus Marcus Sikowski, and Eric Long. Pritchard. Chen is waiting for that out wide. They'll flare it over to Shallot. Cole Antonio. Goes long, he wants a run out of Barbin. It's not going to happen, and they'll let that go for a goal kick. That was a bit of an ambitious ask there for Barbin. Yeah, I think that was a bit much, but a good idea. Just a little bit uh, too much broom on it, I guess. The referee's going to check here, because that's the second time Campbell's gone down. And actually, I think Campbell's being told to leave the pitch. Yeah, I don't think he's doing well, but I think they're going to try to keep him on for so they can get a sub on for him. So far, Campbell has not. He's stretching out that calf as best he can. And now I think the yeah. assistant is pulling him off, and there will be a substitution. So Campbell does leave the field of play, as does Matthew Dooling. Will be a double sub here for Comox. So Dooling out, Campbell out. to be replaced by Theo Fife, who has now entered the match. He sits up in a forward position, replacing Dueling. And Shala sprints down the right, and looking to exploit the new formation here. Can he get a good cross? And he can't. And it will be a corner, though. Immediately called into action is Theo Fife. So we're waiting to see who the official bring on was for Campbell. We wait for that official change. We'll get the corner here for Vic West. Colantonio with the delivery. Finds the head. If there's Wibley, Shallon now with it. Swing and it's in! They've broken the deadlock! And who else would it be? Who else would it be but Patty Nelson? Patrick Nelson, as he has done so many times across so many stops in his soccer career, he finds the back of the net in the 66th minute. Vic West won Comox Valley United nil. Well, it all comes off of a set piece here, Vince, where there's a confusion with the new subs on the pitch, and everything goes all to pieces here. 
Yeah, some uh, shoddy marking there, to be honest, as well, right? You can't leave Patty that much room, or else he's yeah, going to punish you, and he did. First goal of the game, scored in the 66th minute. And number 10, Patrick Nelson. Nice block there as Marcel trying to get free. He'll win a throw out of it. He's now sitting in that left back position. It's Ray Harris who's moved over to cover for Campbell. And he keeps it in more central. And now it's Vic West right back to the attack. Do they feel like they found their group here? I wonder if losing Campbell has suddenly given them the impetus to move on that, on that right side and make the attacks there. Some complaints there over that being a, an improper throw. But, uh, referee seems to let it go. And whether or not field five threw that improperly is for the history books to decide. That block by Ray Harris goes out. They are here, and they're not going away. Wibley reminding Ray Harris that he is not going away. They're just looking for a turnover deep. They aren't going to get it. Another bit of a miscommunication there with Fife. Theo Fife has had a rough introduction to this match, and now a bit of physicality here. That's not going to be uh, condoned by any referee. And Barbin is getting a talking to about that. No cards shown, referee's content to talk the players down here, and no further discipline comes out of it. And I think he's giving them the old, all right, you guys have had your little purse attack. Next time that happens, you're getting in the book. Sugishima. Pritchard takes care of that, but Absol follows up. Goes long. On the hop here, it's a sprint down to the other end. Looking for the cross, it's behind Purcell though. You can see the idea to try and force it through. No one there though. That was Noah Wilson who was making the run up the far side. So he was the sub brought on for Kelly Campbell. Meanwhile, Steele there in a dangerous position. There's some thoughts that there might have been more to it, but the referee is unmoved by the screams of the Comox faithful. Avoids Wibley with that long ball. Marinus puts it out wide. Purcell's in a decent position here. Charlie Purcell puts it low, takes on, bounce off a leg. Hit it. Five, first time oh. ball. Well wide of the net, but he did exactly what you told him to do with Vincent. He hammered that first time. I wonder if Five feels like he has to make up for the that led to that first goal. Well, you know, it sat up there nice for him. That was the right thing to do, just couldn't get over it. And, uh, well, into the upper deck, she went. Lovely upper deck. Yeah, home of PFC, where it's usually a lot of faithful like to sit. That's where they're moving the main supporters section to for the upcoming season. That's going to be fun. No heat stroke for people dancing around with drums and scars for 90 minutes. In theory. In theory. Song sends that one to midfield. Clicked on. It's a good header. And that one will go out, I believe, for a throw. I don't think this went over the end line for a corner. Maybe Barbin on throw in duty, I would believe. Vic West 1, Comox Valley 0. 66th minute goal from Mr. Patrick Nelson adding to his continued story in the VISL. Well, you gotta think that puts him in the discussion for uh, Jackson Cup MVP. If that goal is to stand up as the winner. If it does, I mean, it's been such a close game that if it had gone to penalties, I mean, you could make an argument that someone like the likes of Shale or the likes of of uh, Stinson, who have been trying their best to hold the back line. Well, I'll be honest, I had Justin Black, the keeper for Kobox, mm -hmm. and uh, 
on my radar. Uh, Cole Antonio puts it back post, headed, not cleared, and Black lets that go. It'll be a goal kick. I mean, Black has, I can't really hold him completely at fault for that goal. It was a scramble off of a, up that corner. No, can't blame him at all for that one. Reigns are back in decent force here. It's gonna get a little bit soggy from here on out. Island soccer at its finest. Nice little touch there from Purcell. Lays it off for Sugashima, and Sugashima has space to work with. Tries it himself from distance. That's not even close to the target. And he's frustrated with himself, and he knows he needs to do better at this stage in the game. If you're gonna try the audacious shot, you have to test the keeper. Yes, on target is key. Song will eat a few seconds here. Taking the far side of his box to take this goal kick. Of course he will. That's, that's the best spot for it. It's, it's, it's the only tactical decision to make, really. <laughs> they teach this in goalkeeping school all the time. Which corner do you kick from? The one that's furthest from where you picked it up. That's right. When you're winning. As per Carlos Almeida of the Almeida <laughs> coaching course. Oh, that's going to be a whistle. That might be more than a whistle, too, as Stinson went in there. Oh, yes, yeah, Stinson might get the talking to in a bit here as the Vic West players will be pacified early. No, I think it's just going to be a whistle. Referee's letting them play. He doesn't want the paperwork later. <laughs> in fairness, he's called a very consistent game. Like, say yeah. what you want about calling more or less. He's been consistently Absolutely. with it. Absolutely, yeah, no, no complaints. You were mentioning before at the early part of the game, this is one of the best referees of the season, and we're seeing that this is a very well managed game. So far, it's been great, knock on wood. Yeah. Well, Antonio with delivery on this dead ball. Puts the right footer in, popped up, and it'll be up and over. Wibley's been having trouble finding his accuracy with those headers all evening. He's getting his chances, plenty of them. Yep. Well, he found the net over 30 times this year. So that was just a league play. Factoring a few more there in, uh, in Cup, you know. 31 in the league, five in the Cup. Ties him with Salem Almarty for a team leading the Cup run. 36 goals across all competitions this season. Is um, is bonkers the right word? Yeah, Vince? no, that's, uh, I haven't seen those numbers in years, to be honest. Uh, Brings me back to the early 2000s, the likes of Steve Williams for the Van Trites. Mm. There's a run here for Colin Antonio. But Black is there first. Ooh, taking a tumble over the end line. But no worse for wear. That throw in is a little bit wayward, Ooh. though. You can't give Patrick Nelson that kind of a gift. He's already got one. Does he want two? Nelson. Oh, it almost was. Barring down, but stays out. And that one will go over the net from Almardi as he tried to take the team lead in goals for the Cup. Wow, wow, well that was, you know, I didn't expect that out of Justin Black. He nearly gifted Vic West and Patrick Nelson a, a sure goal there. Wow. That would have been the dagger, you have to think. Yeah, absolutely. No, it'll be tough enough for Comox to get one. A two, two. At this stage, there's not much time left. And, oh. You talk about Patrick Nelson finding ways to kill you. Bar down, and you can see on the replay here, Nelson takes a look. He knows he's taken this the moment he gets the ball, and bar down. Yeah. Wrong side of the bar, but not by much. We're talking well, they're centimeters. Asking, they're asking for a VAR decision on the uh, possible ball of the goal line, and the call is reaffirmed. New technology here at the VISL. Didn't even know you had that. Well, just started it. Just, just right now? Just like just right, right now. now. I see, yes. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Long ball here looking for Wibley. Oh, I think he might have got it here. He's on side two, and he's missed the net again. Oh, my. Oh, you, we saw this in the Tony I Grover Cup. Just thinking about that. Just thinking about that. Where Almeida Lake couldn't Hill, yeah. get a goal for love or money, not even in the PK shootout, and oh. it ultimately cost him. Music, same thing. Like lots of chances, just get, get that dagger. Luck in this case, at least with Wibley's case, his strike partner in Nelson, as you can see here, Wibley's got all the time and just cannot hit the target. 
He's got the advantage of being up 1-0 to make that miss. Ideally, he'd like to not make that miss full stop. Fife coming in, can't get there. Nelson moves forward, Wibley. Beaten to it that time. Absil, back it'll go. Ray Harris. The turn there's Heyman. Brought down, that will be called. Decent place for a set piece for Comox. They need to make this one count. We're about 15 minutes to go. They're running out of time to get these chances. Let alone do anything with them. Even getting the chances against Vic West will be tough enough when they decide they've had enough. Comox needs to be clinical. Two in the wall for Vic West. Absil will be on delivery here. Everyone is forward. And that's over everyone's head and out for a goal kick. That is not how they wanted to run that set piece. Noah Wilson is standing at the center midline. Everyone else, aside from the taker, forward. And it cleared everyone. And they will do a sub here. It'll be Vic West making a sub. That might be Almarty's day at the office done, though. I'm sure he'll have wanted to get a goal or more for his efforts. It's not though like he hasn't contributed by being a big attacking threat on that wing. He will get a rest here. As the rest of the bench gets a bit of a workout. The song will kill a few more seconds here. And the substitute getting ahead to it with his first touch of the ball. Himself introduced into the match. Sushima oh, runs into Shala, and Shala doesn't get called there for essentially being big. <laughs> Which I, I can understand the frustration on that call. Anyway, it's Mackenzie Cole who would come into the match, I should say, for uh, Salem Almarty. Cole now making the run. Does he want the return? Cole Antonio. Cole Antonio will hold up. He's got time. Why not? Patrick Nelson, he's got the goal. There's the cross. Oh, you could see the target standing there. Philippisis never made it. Wilson trying to get forward. Blocked. So he blocks the Vice Miller. Getting his foot on it. Heyman sliding the Vice Miller. Gets in the way. The ball bounces its way to midfield. Purcell trying to get a boot to it. Vic West will recover. Sugashima, who hasn't stopped running from the first whistle. Still trying to be that pest with the high press. A song, lovely ball out of the back. That was clinical. Finding Barbin. Long ball for Nelson. He's on side. Gets past Fife. Just pokes it. Cole couldn't pull the trigger. Now he will. Blocked. Barbin. Deflected. Poked away from Wibley before he can pull the trigger. Now Pritchard steps forward, lets it fall. Pritchard, the center back, going on a little bit of an excursion. Why not? He's got time. Crosses it, Black grabs it. Gets into a collision with multiple players, one of them being his own. Gently guided to the ground there. Black will get things restarted. Goes out wide to the right. That's where Marinus is. Waiting. Does he buy the throw in? He does not. That will go straight out. It'll be a throw for Vic West. Take another look at the chance here as Pritchard puts this through. Black, he's claimed it cleanly. I think the, the, the check there from Stinson was to make absolutely sure that nothing sneaky happened at the back post. Here's the chance again from Wibley. Oh. He's going to be seeing that one in his nightmares, you have to think, Vince. Oh, yeah. Shala. Confidently walks this one out to midfield. Barbin gets past Fife. Shala will help it again with another header. Nelson spins. Up comes Cole Antonio. He'll keep that though. It's out for a throw. Collins man making the clearance. There are substitutions queued up for both sides here. The referee's going to stop the throw in. He'll allow the substitutions to take place. Looks like Heyman will be coming off for Comox. We'll 
Mizzou comes off for Vic West here. If there's an injury or a tactical sub at the way. Coming on. That looks to be Joe Butcher coming on. What, is, what does Butcher have to try and save this match? The Comox. And there's another sub actually coming in here. Stinson's also being pulled off. It really is all hands on deck here. Pulling off a defender, down a goal, facing a set piece. Finally, the throw in from Barbin. Falls next to Nelson, cleared. Not fully, Barbin, little toe poke. Back it comes from Cole. Laird out wide. Can they get the cross in here? Chen. Oh, that's a nice looking header, but just floated over the bar by Dominic Colantonio. And nothing further comes of it. I missed who that sub was for specifically for Vic West, but as I do not see uh, Wibley on the field, I have to assume he was the one who was brought off. Shallot, hard tackler, hard at shoulder barge there. Sugashimi managed to sleep in briefly, but the players take each other out. That's going to be a yellow on who here? It's going to go against the Vic West player. That's going to go against Barbin, I believe. No. No. I think it went against the uh, Comox striker, didn't it? I think it was Joel Butcher. I th well, that would make more sense considering where the, where the foul took place. We'll see here. Yeah, that should be a foul on Butcher. I can't imagine why he was looking at the... Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's a, it's a uh, Vic free kick. That makes absolutely more sense. That would be Butcher being carded. About seven minutes to go, so... The 83rd minute, we'll call it. Ball deep in the attacking end. For Vic West. And that final sub for uh, Comox was indeed Marcus Siskowski. So that was the replacement for Stinson to try and uh, add more to the offense. Corner here for Vic West. Popped up and cleared by Absil. Not well, it does hop under a few legs and it's still a Vic West threat here, but Tsukishimi will help it out. Ray Harris on the deck, Butcher turns, Took it down, no call. Song being given the time signal from all of his outfield players. He'll go long now, it's a three on one here. Everyone from Comox pushed forward. Mackenzie Cole! Over the bar. Black Kings will get things restarted quickly. I'm guessing the, the sense of urgency has been communicated. The players, they get the sense that time's running out. Wilson trying to twist away. Can't, has the ball stripped and going the other direction now. I, guess, I think that is Bryce Marinus who's coming to the match. We now have both of the Marinuses. Marin Asai <laughs> on the field. Sugishima nearly takes out Barb. That would have been an easy foul. You know, I've got to be a proud dad seeing both your boys on the field, right? In competition, though, I have to feel, imagine that kind of makes things difficult. Sure, but you know, at the end of the day, he can say both his boys are on the field and, you know, the years, the sacrifices, the time, you know, the volunteering hours sort of paid off, right? Fair enough. Not. We'll call that. There will be some dissent about it. Well, 
as we continue. Long, a bit of a slip there by Cole. Well shielded. Antonio Nelson goes out wide to Bryce Marinus. Headed down. Cole looks for the return, gets it to him. Marinus centers! And there's two! It's Kolopisis! Yeah, you know what? Kolopisis has had a great match. He's been a general in the middle of the park. I think that goal might have just been the exclamation mark on what has just been a great, great game for him. Um, well, I mean, obviously the dagger. Uh, if I'm to have a vote, it's going to be that Cola Pisces guy. He's, uh, he's had a great match. Just a great match. The assist goes to the recently subbed on Bryce Marinus. So he makes his impact immediately in the 84th minute. 85th minute, call it. Dorian Kolopaisis in the 86th minute. With the dagger, you'd have to think, barring some absolute heroics from Kolox. Now Vic West up two goals to nil in a cup final. This, this might be academic for them. Return, I've got to buzz off to get some duties done, but thank you once again for a fabulous job every year. It's great to have you here, so thank you very much. Great to be here and great to speak with you again, Vince. See you next year. Vince Greco, always a joy to have as my co-pilot for these. So he heads off to help with the trophy presentations that will be taking place at the end of the game. So there, that'll be a free kick for Vic West. It took them to the 66th minute to get their goal, but Patrick Nelson opened the scoring. Off a scramble off of a set piece of a corner, right after some substitutions have been made by Comox Valley. And that would be enough, that would be enough to win it, though a dagger was just added on a break going the other way, three on one. Dorian Kalapisis gets a reward for a very hard-working day at the office, getting his goal with a lovely setup from Bryce Marinus having just subbed into the match. Shallot, thought he defended that, but no, it's gonna go to Comox. And forward they go, they haven't quit yet. Why would they? Owen Ray Harris defending that. Goes long. It's going to be headed and clear by Shallot. Uncontested. Kolopisis. This is a flick on that, but now we'll get it back. Kolopisis. Forward. Mackenzie Cole. Little toe poke. Tries to go for pace. Black will pick that one up. Quickly sent forward. No subtlety about this now. And Sugashima trying to pick the clock out of Shallot from behind. That's, that's a tall order. Garvin goes back to a song. Butcher trying to close him down. Forces the long kick. Chested down. Wilson with the chesting down there. Over to the side, but not out. Well held in, and now that'll be a foul, surely. Yes, it will be. A bit too eager to get into the uh, thick of things there was Marcus Siskowski. Chen standing over there, and he'll give way, let Pritchard have set-piece duties on this, the defender. In motion is Bryce Marinus, though. He gets a little flick onto it in a dangerous position, cleared by Wilson. And that will be a throw the way of Vic West. And they will be happy to keep the ball in this end of the pitch. They will be happy to keep it near the corner flag. We've played the 90 by the unofficial clock we have here in the broadcast booth. So it's... It's simply a matter of waiting for the final whistle and keeping their nose clean at the back. For Vic West, for Comox, it's try anything and everything. It's been a great cup run. No one will begrudge them that. And for the first half, it there was that spark of hope. You thought, well, they're, they're fighting like they have absolutely all the guns blazing. It came the second half, and Vic West found their next gear and pulled away.
Throw in for Comox on the far side. Headed down by Vice Miller. Bryce Mariner's coming up for there. It'll go through. Ray Harris. Fife is waiting for it. It'll go to Fife. Nice little move to get past Nelson. The Comox faithful love seeing that. Fife stays with it. Tries a switch. Looks okay. Absil sliding and can't get it there. Pritchard stepping up from the back line to clear it. And it will be a throw for Comox. You know they'd love one for pride if nothing else. Parcel with the throw in. Long ball. Shala heads that back to his keeper a little bit awkwardly. And a song has to work for that. That might be a corner. And it is. Spilled by a song. And everyone's forward, even Black's forward. Goalkeeper forward. Can they get one? Black calls word at the back post. There's the delivery. It is high to the back post. And foul called. Offside on the play or foul. Doesn't really matter. Whistle goes. And that's going to do it. That was the last gasp. And that is 90 minutes done. They've done it for the second year in a row. Back to back. They've defended the Sir John Jackson Cup. Vic West are your 2024 Jackson Cup winners. Take nothing away from Comox Valley. They showed they had every reason to be the finalists this year. Fought like it, did not give Vic West an easy path to their second trophy in as many years. Their 24th Jackson Cup all time. Goals from Patrick Nelson and Dorian Kolopaisis sealing the deal for the men in green and white. It's another trophy on an utterly dominant season for Vic West. First in the league, Cup Winners Cup. You heard Vince Greco talking about it earlier. The hardware is just piling up for this side. Treble, or I believe he's at a quadruple now with the Jackson Cup. It's an absolutely sensational haul. And they will be rightly awarded the Jackson Cup after the handshake here. Comox Valley, they are holding their heads high, and why wouldn't they? Absolutely wonderful showing from both sides here today. Wonderful Jackson Cup final. One to be remembered for sure. Here we go, looking at some of these highlights. Salem Almardi, with an attempt there. Almardi and Whibley were just snaking it, it felt like. You didn't know if they were ever gonna find the back of the net, and this was the closest. That might be the closest chance that Comox had. It's Kei Tsugashima, who was ever present, buzzing all afternoon, all evening, trying to find a little slip up, just couldn't chip the keeper there. Shala's header, Nelson off the post, off a scramble. Shala gets credit for the assist on that one, so add that to his tally. But that would be the winning goal, ultimately. Shala to Nelson in the 66th minute. And then here, off of a rare giveaway from Justin Black in goal, Nelson nearly makes it too, but it's barred down and out on the wrong side of the goal line for Nelson. And then Almarty puts this one over the net. And then finally, Wibley, who thought he had the... He had his duck broken finally as he was finally in the clear, onside, nothing stopping him, but he could not hit the net. Brief little collision there between Stinson and Black, but it was well claimed. Another one very nearly. As Vic West, they did get their chances repeatedly as the game went on, as they found their ways in. Meanwhile, yellow card shown there to Butcher, who went in a little bit strong. This is strong after coming on to the match for Joe Butcher. But then here's how it ended. Nelson goes out wide, finds Bryce Marinus, puts the cross into Dorian Colopisis, and that's the 2 0 gold. You can see the players there celebrating. It's a truly, it's the green is the color of the season, the Vancouver Island Soccer League. Here's that second goal again. Nelson, Cole, this was, this was Cole's chance from earlier, my apologies. There we go, there's Cole setting up Marinus. Marinus in the center, 
Hits Cola Pisces, who slides in, catches Black the wrong way. 2 0. And we're done. Pritchard was one of the people, saw number four in green there earlier. Pritchard was one of the players on that side last year that won it in penalties. As the, you can see, the cups there waiting to be awarded. Theo Weissmiller was also on that side from last year. Salem Almardi got an assist in the 78th minute in last year's cup final. Victor Chen, who started that match, also got himself an assist in one of the goals during regular play. Mackenzie Cole, also part of these back-to-back -back cup winning teams. So the, the pieces are here for Vic West. They can keep so much of, as much of this as they can keep together, they, this could start to become a dominant run for them. We talked about this last time we saw Vic West in the final. They, the, the 80s was Vic West's decade. 81, 82, 84, 86, 87, 89, all wins for Vic West in the Jackson Cup. And somewhat paradoxically, that would be the last one they would win, 89, until last year's win in 2023. And now they've added a second for this decade. 2024 is the 24th Sir John Jackson Cup won by Vic West. Vic West to get the reinforcements to the likes. If you can see 21 green there on the right of your screen, Peter Shalek. How much of a boon is that to already have a fantastic season and then to grab someone with Canadian Premier League experience with a pedigree in German soccer to come in and marshal your back line? What a boost. Players are heading now off to the corner of the pitch for the medal and trophy presentation. You can see there they will be rewarding the Cups for the game MVP. And as you heard Vince saying before he went off there, he, he likes what he saw from Dorian Colapaisis. I would not be shocked at all if that is indeed the name that is read out as the Cup MVP. I don't know if we're going to have any special guests this year. They, it was surprised uh, last year, a historical member of the Vic West, one of the Cup winners from the past, came and helped with the presentation. It was a very touching moment. I think it'll just be the this year's Vic West this year, unless they've managed to sneak another surprise in here. Vic West in their greens there. Comox Valley in their reds, awaiting their runner-up medals. Which for Comox Valley, again, take nothing away from them. A seventh place finish, where they were t had a goal differential of negative 20 after their league campaign. They kept fighting all the way to the Jackson Cup final. They will get a form of hardware in the form of a runner's-up medal. And considering what their league campaign was this season, that is a heck of a reward to come away with. They kept it scoreless for 66 minutes before the floodgates finally opened. It just wasn't enough to hold off Vic West's attack. We talked about it before the game. The number of attackers they had, the number of threats available for Vic West, both on the pitch and on the bench. It was never going to be an easy time for Comox. It was never going to be a sure thing for Comox. But to their eternal credit, it was never going to be a sure thing for Vic West either when it became clear that Comox was here to play. And they didn't do it necessarily by counterpunching and waiting. They tried their best to go at Vic West. And all the respect in the world to Comox for fighting all the way to the 90th to try and get something out of this match. The Jackson Cup silver medals. Presented by VSL Executive Director Vince Greco. That's Vince, you can see there in the blue jacket, giving his uh, speech to the two finalists. And they will now present the medals, first of all, to the efficients. Excellent game for the efficient crew, with no real controversies whatsoever. Anytime you don't have to worry about the referees, you know they've done a good job. And so the referees haven't been given their medals. It's now time for Comox Valley United to receive 
their very due rewards here. Joe Butcher will be front of the line to get it. He's a late sub. He'll be on the score sheet with a yellow for his tackle, but he provided the energy that was needed. Justin Black now, goalkeeper number one. He was busy. I can't really fault him on the goal that ultimately won it. He was a very core part. That defense, Theo Fife. It was a rough game. He came in on a set piece, and there was definitely a bit of confusion that may have led to that goal. But regardless, Fife, I think he can proudly look back at the little ole, the Matador moment that he gave to Patrick Nelson near the end of the match to try and keep the attack alive. Ray Harris there, five in red. Owen Ray Harris and Finn Collins' man had the task of their lives trying to maintain, or trying to contain that Vic West attack. That is not an easy order by any stretch of the imagination. They did their absolute best. Kelly Campbell there, had to come off with a bit of a knock. Kade Sugishima. The battle that this man showed, trying to keep his team with some spark, some hope that they could maybe score at least one. Never stopped pressing, never stopped buzzing, looking for a way to pick the pocket of either Chalet or Pritchard. Ultimately couldn't find it in the end. The one glorious chance that he did manage to get free, Michael Asong was there, equal to the task. Saw Eric Long there, 21. Charlie Purcell. Collins man getting his runner up medal. Gokan Avsil. Part of that midfield. And there are your 2024 Jackson Cup finalists. The runners up, Comox Valley United. Made something out of their season, did they ever? That's the happiest looking you'll ever see a seventh place team in Division One of the VISL. Fantastic showing by the visitors from Comox Valley. They will have every right to be happy with the battle that they showed here. I'm sure they would have loved to have the gold medals rather than the silver, but take nothing away from them. Excellent performance from Comox Valley. They did not look out of place for a second. It was ultimately the depth of Vic West and the talent that they had that put, that put the match away. To the Sir John Jackson Cup champions, president of VISL, Paul Waller. And now here they are, the second time in as many years, back to back Sir John Jackson Cup champs, Vic West. There's Bryce Marinus getting his medal. A Marinus on each side of the pitch, and at least one Marinus was getting a winner's medal today. Tony Barbin there getting his medal. Nicholas Hallam, 22, is marked by Vince, as we heard earlier, as one of those rookies to watch, and we saw that he had ideas for days he tried to create from the top of the midfield. Attacking roll there. Salem Almarty. Number nine. What did he have a he had eyes for goal and he wanted his name on that score sheet badly. Never found it in the end. Did not stop trying. You wouldn't have bet against him. Victor Chen there. Theo Weissmiller, one of the back to backs. Peter Shallot. No missing Peter Shallot in the crowd. Shows up. Gets a winner's medal. Absolutely imposing figure.
and Patrick Nelson. See the right side of your screen there. Another goal to add to his legendary tally. In Wibley as well, it's 31 goals in the league campaign. Plus, was it five or six more? It was five more in the cup campaign with 36 across all competitions. He, Almardi, and Nelson, five goals at the end of the Jackson Cup each. And Cole Pisces with his second Jackson Cup goal in 2024. And this year's recipient of the Danny Gervin Memorial Trophy for the Impact Canopy Player of the Game and MVP of the Jackson Cup, presented by the Gervin family, is number eight from Vic West, Dorian Kalapasis. Kalapasis does get the MVP award, as was called earlier. He was a presence in midfield. He was there on the attack, scored the dagger goal. A great setup from Marinus. And Kolopaisis gets an extra bit of hardware for his hard work. And there is one final, rather large, important piece of silverware to hand out that we are all eagerly awaiting the presentation of. The Sir John Jackson Cup. First awarded in 1914, 1915, excuse me to the Saanich Thistles. And then in 1916, to Vic West. This is a team all over the history of the Sir John Jackson Cup, going all the way back to its, or its inception. The first three times it was held, Vic West won two of them, 1916 and 1918. And there you can see it being held on the right side of your screen. And once again, Vic West, Sir John Jackson Cup champs at Starlight Stadium. And while they party on, we will bid them adieu. For everyone here, Vince Greco and the VISL, this has been a Rogers TV production of the Sir John Jackson Cup final. My name is Roturo. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next year.